creating stuff is the only thing that I've ever wanted to do with my life. I think it comes from a fundamental urge to be like understood. I think that it's always been easier for me to perform than it has been to talk about my emotions. Right, I kind of took this really weird path and everybody has their own unique path and we just have to be able to appreciate where we were at the time. I think that that's okay. I was probably about five or six. One of my first drawings was drawn like this little porcelain rabbit and my dad kind of talked me through it. Like he'd say, look at the curve or look at the circle shape and all that stuff. And I realized, you know, at that point that I could actually translate that. But more importantly, it was like the way he described it. If I learned how to visually describe that to myself, I could make imagery appear on the paper. Art was just kind of something I did, it wasn't anything that I thought about as a career. And it was just over time while I was in college, I realized you could become a graphic designer or an animator. I realized I wasn't limited to just one art form. I did a lot of musical theater growing up. Being an actor really trained me to just sort of assume the roles that people want to see. My project is called Horseman. Uh, when I started this project, I was kind of like, I wrote all these songs, I'm gonna put them out yeah. and see what happens. I'm going to adopt this character so that I can be the most honest that I can be. I think when people see it live, um, they sort of understand the whole thing about the character better. Is it because it doesn't feel like me, but that, you know, sort of myth sings about how I feel. My dad actually owns a junkyard, and so I grew up playing hide-and-seek, building things, getting lost in giant piles of junk, and I always loved to use those pieces that were kind of huh? forgotten and abandoned and create other things. How easy that one came out. I really loved sculpture, and I started doing a lot of cosplay, and gradually that went from doing simple costumes into like big armor, and then I was like, I don't even want to do an existing character. I want to imagine my own. Then that became wearable sculpture, and it just all sort of snowballed into now doing these larger museum installations and giant sculptures that move and breathe. I think I started my first punk band when I was 12, and I only knew how to make like like power chords. I couldn't even like add my my pinky to create the octave on the guitar. And so everything was just like, like, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but that was okay, because that was all that I wanted to make. I had a really great college instructor who said that if you have a plan B, you'll take it. Plan B was never an option. I found something that just was almost there in music, and then I found that I had a, a much more of a natural knack. Music was my plan B, I guess. Oh, you're doing great. So I just remember I was behind the venue. We had played the show and it was amazing. Filled up with all of the endorphins and adrenaline you possibly could be. And then afterwards, I felt so empty and low that I called my wife Victoria on the phone and I said, I, I'm done with this. This is my last tour. I don't want to do it anymore. I was 28, about to turn 29 when that happened. That was when I was like, I have to do filmmaking. 
some of the bigger projects I do, like when I get to like travel out of the country and do documentary work, or when I get to be on like big sets and I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? All these people know way more than me and half of them are like 10 years younger than me too. It's like, what, what am I doing? And I, I think what, what keeps me going is the fact that each time it gets so much better that like I just can't wait to go out and prove myself again. There's also always a leap of faith, there's always a risk, but if art isn't evolving and you're not growing, then what's the point? There's so much junk that goes into my head that it has to come out, and if I don't get it out, I lose my mind. When you're an artist, I don't think you do it because you want to as much as you do it because you have to. Like, you, you, you just have this process that your brain doesn't shut off. If I go a long time, and by a long time, like three or four days without kind of making something, whether that's a film or if that's a, a piece of art or a song, making something, then I don't know who I am anymore. But being able to create something different gives me control again. The only thing running through your brain was how bad this would hurt. There was this DM I got. She said that she was at our headline show. She had just broken up with the person she was dating, and when we played Bear Trap at the end of the set right before we went to the encore, she had this revelation that she really wanted to be with this person. Then when I put out the live album, they played the live version of Bear Trap like at their wedding. And like that's such a cool, like the fact that that happened, like I, uh, like that's enough, you know. I get to impose a little bit of who I am on the world and kind of leave it there and it's outside of me. And in that moment, that snapshot of who I was will exist as long as that thing exists. That's a privilege that we get as artists that you can't you can't quantify, but once you've experienced it and you get like hooked on that, I think that it's the greatest therapy there is. And so maybe I'm just self-medicating.